In a recent video, I talked about scrapers. And in this one, I'm gonna make a scraper from an old saw blade. Now I have a few that are worn out. Well, the problem with these ones here are these laser cuts. However, I've got another blade that doesn't have these that I can use. Another option is to cut one from an old handsaw. If you can find one that's clean enough, a little bit of rust is not gonna hurt, but you don't want anything that's deeply pitted. The steel has to be hardened. You can't go to your home center and buy a piece of mild steel and expect to make a scraper with that that's gonna hold a cutting edge, it won't. To lay out the scraper, I'm gonna use another scraper that I already made, except I cut this one from a bigger saw blade. This is gonna be the tricky part for some people, cutting it out. The main thing is that you make sure that it stays relatively straight, because that'll reduce the amount of work you have to do to straighten it after. Depending on the saw blade, you might be able to do it with a hacksaw. It will probably wear out the hacksaw blade very quickly. Another possibility is to use a metal cutting blade in the jigsaw. I would recommend going very slow and using oil. And even then, you'll probably go through a few blades as well. Another thing to watch for while you're cutting it out is to not overheat the steel too much. If you see it start turning black and then blue, you know it's getting too hot. And if you're using a thin cutting blade like this, the reason why that's happening is likely because you are pushing the side of the disc up against the steel that you already cut through and heating it up. It also helps to move the blade up and down in the cut, and that'll let it go through the steel more efficiently and be less likely to overheat. I'm gonna take my sharpening stone and put it in my quick release vise. And if you're in the mood for a challenging project, you can get the plans for this on my website. I got the coarse side of the stone exposed and I'm gonna flatten each side of the scraper to begin with. And to help with that, I've taken a block of wood and I've used double-sided tape to stick it onto the side to use as a handle so I can more effectively stroke it back and forth. Notice how I'm using the entire surface of the stone here. That's just a really good habit to get into to avoid uneven wear. Another option is to use wet dry sandpaper if you don't have a larger stone like this. All right, at this point I should say that when you're working with something like this, you know, perfect is good, but it takes a lot longer than good enough. And while you'll get marginally better results if your plate is absolutely perfectly flat and smooth, I don't think it's worth the amount of effort it would take to get it there when you're working with this kind of steel. Anyway, so I got the first side done. Now I flipped it over. I'm going to work on that for a little bit the same way. Next step is to work on the edges. And what I have here is a block of maple, and that will keep the scraper standing up square to the stone as I stroke it back and forth. And what I'm looking for here is a nice, flat, straight edge. And again, if you don't have a large stone like this, or if you don't want to possibly cut a groove into your large stone, you can always use sandpaper. Like for instance, here I've got a piece of an old grinding belt just clamped down to my workbench. Another possibility is a large file, but you have to make sure that the file is actually flat. Of the three, my preference would be for using the file. It cuts a lot faster than both the stone and the sandpaper. The last thing I'm gonna do at the edge is flip my stone over to the fine side, rub it a few times on there, and that'll help to smooth out any roughness left over from the file. Ironically, even though what we're looking for here in the end is a burr, I want to get rid of the burr that I just created by filing it and rubbing it on the fine side of the stone. So I've got a perfectly flat square corner to work with. Okay, so I've clamped the scraper with one edge up in my vise. 
And this is the part that I'm sure a lot of people get tripped up on. And I think mainly it's because they don't know which angle to hold the burnisher. And in my opinion, this is something that you have to get a feel for. What I would recommend doing is getting this far and trying to roll the edge over and then see how it cuts. And as you do it more often, you'll get better at it. This is just a screwdriver bit, a long one. And this is hardened steel. It has to be hardened steel. And I'm going to wipe a little bit of oil on the edge of the scraper. And I'm going to stroke that screwdriver bit back and forth at a slight angle until it rolls that edge over. Okay, now the only thing left to do is to try it out and see how it works. You can use the scraper by pushing it, and that's usually the most effective. However, if I'm working on something narrower, I like to pull it back. I find that I have a little bit more control over the angle that I'm holding it at.